and also how we can apply the concept of critical angle to a specific problem. I'm going to read the specific problem first, but then we'll spend a little time just talking about critical angle before we even try and attack this problem. This specific problem says, water has an index of refraction of 1.33, and air has an index of refraction of 1.00. Determine the critical angle for a water-air boundary. Again, let's put that on hold for a second and just talk about critical angle and what it means. So I could imagine that there's going to be some refraction anytime light goes from a slower to a faster material, or a faster from a slow to a slower material, as long as it enters at some non-zero angle. So let me give you both cases. Let's say here's one boundary of something where the first material is fast, meaning a low index of refraction, and the second material light travels slower through, meaning a higher index of refraction. So I could send some light from the fast to the slow material, and using Snell's law with any value, you'll see that that light bends toward the normal. And the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. And of course, if I make this bigger, this gets bigger. But pretty much I can make any angle between 0 and 90 in here, and I'm going to get some angle that works over here. Now, that's not the case if you send it from something slow into something fast. Let's make this first material now a slow material, the high N value material, and the second material a fast material. So air travels slower in this. Let's say I send it in at some angle. When you go from something slow to something fast, the light bends away from the normal. So I get a bigger angle of refraction than an angle of incidence. And of course, as you make your angle of incidence bigger, your angle of refraction gets bigger. But there's a limit to how big this angle of incidence can be. And this gets bigger, bigger, bigger. This gets bigger, bigger, bigger. But you can see that there's the, this like last possible angle of refraction. So you can imagine that you can make your incident angle so big that the refracted angle, if I make my incident angle big enough, my refracted angle is essentially going to be 90. It's going to be like skimming the surface out there. And then beyond that, no light can get out. It's not going to refract out. It's called what's called total internal reflection. So at some point, I'm going to get the last possible incident angle that produces any refraction at all. And that's called the critical angle. So the critical angle is the incident angle that makes that refracted angle equal to 90 degrees. The critical angle only happens when you go from a slow material to a fast material. And if you send light in beyond the critical angle, you don't get any refraction. You only get reflection. You only get bouncing off. Before the critical angle, you get some refraction and some reflection. Okay, so the first thing to note is it's got to go from slow to fast. So with this water-air boundary, and it, it has to go from slow to fast, that means critical angle only happens when you go from a slow material, which is water, the bigger N, to air, the smaller N. And so we can look for what the critical angle is, meaning what incident angle, okay, the CR, I'll abbreviate it, makes a refracted angle of 90 degrees. So I'm looking for the incident angle. That's my question in this. I know my first N. I actually know my second N value. And I know my second angle value. So when you substitute all of this into Snell's law, into N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2, what you solve for is that the critical angle for the water-air boundary works out to be 48.6 degrees. Which means any time light is hitting that boundary at greater than 48.6, no light's going to get out. It's just going to be trapped and stay inside and reflect only. So a few key things to note for critical angle. It has to be going from slow to fast. There's no critical angle produced when light goes from something fast into something slow. And you're also, by definition, calling that refracted angle. 